Elon Musk's aerospace innovation company, SpaceX, boasts swift progress on the development and launch of the Starship, a giant space vessel that would potentially bring man to Mars and back to Earth over and over again. The Starship will feature the mammoth-sized Super Heavy rocket, and that Super Heavy booster will be an absolute beast at tasks like this. Stay tuned to know more about how it works and why it's a game changer. First off, it's quite notable to see that SpaceX has yet to release any sort of official statement that further provides better information on the catching process of the Starship and the Super Heavy rocket. SpaceX's Starbase Stage Zero, which will host the eventual launch of the Starship and the Super Heavy booster, will serve two purposes, the first being the launch mount and the second being for ground support equipment. Beyond this, the Starbase also has a 400-foot-tall orbital launch tower designed to catch the Starship and the Super Heavy as it attempts to land on Earth from above and beyond. The Super Heavy rocket was originally designed to launch the huge Starship space vessel into orbit. To enable it to do this, it will include 29 individual engines. This is indeed an outrageous number of engines for a spacecraft in this situation, which makes the Super Heavy one of the biggest rocket boosters in history. Intense! The Starship itself will have just six Raptors, in contrast to the Super Heavy's capacity of close to 30. At the upper stage of the 29 Raptor engines is the 165-foot-tall spacecraft, and it's a fully reusable transport system. Both of these elements will be powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which will save a lot in fuel when the actual Moon and Mars launches are authorized. Before these launches, though, multiple Starship prototypes have graced the skies of southern Texas already. For instance, the three-engine vehicle known as the SN-15 completed a test flight that took it to the maximum altitude of 6.2 miles. Riding on the success of that and other successful test flights and static fire tests, SpaceX is gearing up for the first-ever Starship orbital test flight, which is to take place within the next few months. On that flight, a super-heavy Starship combo will lift off from South Texas, and then the Super Heavy lower stage will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico, about 20 miles offshore from Boca Chica. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage will power itself to orbit around the Earth and eventually come down onto the Earth's surface for its ocean landing near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. This self-landing feature turns out to be a major game changer for other companies in the space industry. But regardless of all this, the Super Heavy Starship has a massive cylinder of stainless steel that will be powered up by just three Raptor engines as part of a brief static fire test, and we should expect additional test flights in relatively quick succession immediately after that. Elon Musk is known to set particularly aggressive progress timelines for all of his companies, and his Starship plans are no exception. If development and testing continue to go well according to plan, the systems could be fully up and running by 2023, depending on, of course, on the progress of Booster 4. There could be a 9-engine static firing soon, which pretty closely reflects the actual plan of the innovative space company on how the vehicles would run. Interestingly, all of the rockets that they have use pretty much the same type of chemical propulsion technology. For those who don't already know, chemical propulsion is propulsion in which thrust is generated by the byproduct of a chemical reaction, often the combustion or oxidization of fuel. It grows too large for the reaction chamber and pushes out the back of the rocket as it expands. This gives the rocket the thrust. A rocket travels forward by squirting propellant out of its tail while orbital rockets burn their fuel with an explosive emission. The use of the word squirt is intentional, and it accurately depicts how rockets actively use up their propellant fuel. Burning or not, the rocket propellant needs to be shot out of the engines at high speeds to accelerate the vehicle. But there are some lower thrust, low efficiency rockets that use water as their propellant. This is an odd choice because water does not combust at all. Whether the rocket uses water or a combustible liquid as propellant, as it gets squirted out of the nozzle, each kilogram of propellant makes the rocket one kilogram less heavy. As the rocket continues to use up its propellant and gets less and less heavy, which in turn allows it to accelerate faster and faster with time, such that when it's almost empty, it will be gaining speed at a much higher rate than when it was full. This is to be expected, as the overall weight of the spacecraft would be inversely proportional to the speed of the spacecraft. The rapid depletion of heavy fuel tanks would in turn allow the spacecraft freedom of further flight, as there's less and less weight on the body of the spacecraft for the Earth's gravitational pull to work on. Therefore, the propellant accounts for most of the weight of the rocket. 
but you also need to remember that their engines and the body of the super heavy rocket have their weight too that ought to be accounted for. This weight is the reason why all orbital rockets are staged. That is, they break apart in sections at separate points in the space mission. When the first stage is empty, it doesn't make any sense for the rocket to have to drag along the weight of the first stage with it. Another reason why rocket engines are staged is that rocket engines perform differently inside the Earth's atmosphere than when it's out in the continuous vacuum that is in space. In the Super Heavy Booster, liquid fuel and liquid oxygen will be pumped upwards from the ground support systems in Starbase Zero through pipes inside the Super Heavy that travel up its entire length, which is around 70 meters. This was designed for rapid reusability so that no plumbing would need to be attached to the outside of the Starship launch system, helping the Super Heavy perform its main job of getting the Starship out of the atmosphere and well on its way to orbital speed. Once the space vehicle reaches a certain point, the Super Heavy will turn off its engines in an action known as MECO, or Main Engine Cutoff. After that, it will release the Starship, an event called Stage Separation, all within a specific time window. These events have to happen after the vehicle is going fast enough for the Starship to be able to do the rest of the acceleration, up to orbital speed, all on its own. They also have to happen before the Super Heavy Booster gets too low on propellant. While the Starship will have a robust heat shield for entering the Earth's atmosphere while traveling at an absolutely dizzying orbital speeds and surviving it, the Super Heavy does not have a heat shield because these vessels will always remain suborbital. When the time comes, descent into Earth's atmosphere will be fairly easy, despite it still having its entire system of highly powered Raptor engines, thanks to the Super Heavy being mostly empty of propellant. According to Mr. Musk's recent revelation, SpaceX intends to perform a new hop test on the BN-1 Super Heavy booster for a few months into the year. Following this news, SpaceX revealed that it eventually intends to catch the Super Heavy boosters using the 400-foot-tall Mechazilla Catcher, which entirely removes the need for landing legs. The booster also features a structural addition that appears to most as being a novel feature, a hexagonal or octagonal steel ring. The unique forward dome is the first tangible sign of the necessary modifications to install a variety of hardware-specific to SpaceX's Super Heavy. These will be used to ensure both aerodynamic stability and control authority while transitioning from hypersonic to supersonic speeds. SpaceX graphics also indicate that the Super Heavy's grid fins will be constructed from welded steel. The actual construction of SpaceX's first booster prototype is noticeably making significant headway. SpaceX also saw the end of an abnormally long period of activity this week when it was spotted stacking the first Super Heavy ring sections since early November 2020. SpaceX technicians are also thought to have installed either one or two four-ring sections on an existing booster segment inside the high bay in May of 2021. With all of this progress and modification being made in the vessel's construction, the goal remains unwavering to have a sustainable means of transporting man to Mars and even into the further reaches of our unique galaxy, making man a successful multiplanetary or interplanetary species. Leave a comment and let us know what you think of this beast of an engine, as well as its accompanying Starship and Mechazilla vessels for catching this enormous spacecraft and the potential success for the whole Starbase project.